Yes, dairy products um, are, are good for your health. No question that milk is an excellent source of calcium. Let me tell you about milk. The number one protein in milk is casein, C-A-S-E-I-N. That's 80% of the protein in milk. That's the same glue they use to put a label on a bottle of beer. That's the same glue they use to hold your wooden furniture together. So we're drinking glue. You're drinking glue and you create so much mucus. This much casein, this much mucus. It didn't occur to me until I actually arrived in Canada that, that milk itself can be portrayed as a, as a dangerous product. Milk is dead. Milk is dead. Milk is dead. I even don't know if I would drink milk if I wouldn't have my own milk or if I wouldn't have access to raw milk. I probably just would say, well, do you, you know what, forget it. There's a perception that pasteurization destroys all the microflora in the milk. It does not. Pasteurized milk is not a sterile product. The dairy industry, every dairy farmer, and there are probably a few in the audience now, you know that for every hundred pounds of milk you produce, you got to pay 15 cents to the National Fluid Milk Processors. Doesn't sound like a lot of money. What are they doing with that money? It's $500 million a year to paint milk mustaches on the lips of mums. Many people will say, well, let's make milk healthier. Let's take all that fat out and have non-fat milk. And you know what? That's a good move. And you can make it healthier still by taking out those proteins that tend to trigger allergies, migraines for some people. And then you could take the hormones out, remove all of that, and pretty soon you know what you're going to be left with? A glass of water. And maybe that's what we really should be drinking. Well, the information on milk over the years has been a serious distortion of the facts. A bottle of milk, oddly enough, is a product that is extracted from cows. And it all began about somewhere between four and 6,000 years ago when people figured out how to make cows stand still. And they decided that at that point they could take their milk, which is actually intended for their calves, and they could drink it themselves. And it's, I think it always makes Mother Nature scratch her head. Milk, is, uh, as far as a food is concerned, it may be our biggest problem we have to face in the future. Come on, our society was built, this country was built on the nourishment of milk. Milk does not do the body good. And the blessing, and I have to say the blessing of pasteurization because if that milk does not get pasteurized and it goes out to the public, it can be definitely dangerous. It can be pure poison. Milk is crystallized love, when you really think about it. Milk is the first thing a baby gets from the mother, when the mother and baby separated. The only thing what connects them is actually the milk. So when you think about it, that, that the sacrifice a cow is giving by providing this milk as nourishment for others, I, I find it I find it very fascinating to look at to look at that from that point of view. In order to know what bread is, you need to be hungry. In order to know what water is, you need to be thirsty. In order to know what milk is, you need to love. And so I would say milk is a physical manifestation of love. And when you cherish it in that way, and when you look at that in that way, then milk becomes a completely different substance than the commodity on our corporate farms. Milk is freedom. It is freedom from disease. It is freedom from political oppression. It is freedom for the human spirit. It is freedom to live the way human beings have historically lived not the way they live today under the yoke of corporate power. Milk is one of the most heavily marketed frauds that you've ever seen.